In active standby mode, one ASA is active operationally. Configuration and connection state changes are replicated to the standby ASA for stateful failure recovery. If an active ASA fails and goes down, the standby ASA will go active and take over the role as the primary ASA. One important thing to understand about high availability ASA firewalls is how they need to be interconnected. Each firewall must have the same zone interface connections. This is required so that if a firewall were to fail, it still has the same physical connectivity as the active firewall. In addition to our zone interfaces, firewalls must have what's called a LAN failover interface. This interface is used for hello messages between the firewalls so that both firewalls know the status of their peer. It's also used for configuration, replication, and synchronization. So if a configuration change is made on the active firewall, it can use this interface to replicate that change to the standby firewall. In addition to the LAN failover link, you can optionally have a state failover link. This link is used to pass connection state information so that the standby firewall can support existing connections that were previously on the active firewall. The state failover link should be a dedicated link separate from the LAN failover link, but it can use the same link as the LAN failover link. So you could add both of these failover roles to a single link between the firewalls. Before we configure the actual failover commands on our firewalls, we want to have standby IP addresses assigned to all of our interfaces. This IP is pushed to the standby unit and can be used for interface monitoring between the primary and secondary firewalls. It can be any available IP address on the interface's LAN. If possible, you want to make it the next available IP address after the primary IP. To configure failover between our ASA firewalls, we have to configure failover parameters on the active and standby firewall. The first step is to enable failover globally. Then we define which unit will start off as the primary firewall and which unit will be the secondary firewall. Then we have to assign an interface to be a LAN failover link. Then there's some timers. You want to have a failover key for security. The failover replication HTTP command is what enables state replication for HTTP traffic. Then we define our stateful failover link, which we're going to follow the best practice in this lab and have a dedicated link for LAN failover and a dedicated link for state failover. And then IP addresses are required for the communication between the LAN and state interfaces, so we need to assign IP addresses for those interfaces. And these can be non-routable networks because the layer 3 communication is only going to exist on your directly connected interconnections between the firewalls. Now we'll jump into the lab ASA firewalls to configure active standby failover. Okay, so we'll start on the firewall that we consider to be the primary out of our two firewalls. We'll paste in our failover configuration. After you paste in your failover configuration, you may lose connectivity to the firewall as it goes through its negotiation to see if there are any other HA firewalls connected. I'm logged back in and I ran the command show failover history and you can see from the time I pasted in the failover configuration, you can see the different states the firewall went through while it negotiated. Next I want to add secondary IP addresses to all of our IP interfaces. Run the command show run interface. I have a standby IP assigned to my management address, but now I'm going to want to go through and, and add standby IPs to all my active IP interfaces. I'm just going to pull up a notepad, paste it in, and then I'm going to use the next available IP address. Let me add the command standby and the IP address. Two. 
and then we'll use dot two on this network too. When you configure failover, if you start with the firewall that's considered to be the primary, you'll just add your standby addresses to its configuration and now our primary firewall is configured. Our second firewall that we add to the failover pair would be considered to be our secondary firewall. And since we already configured these interfaces on the primary, we don't have to configure any of these IP interfaces to the standby firewall. It'll retrieve these parameters through synchronization once it communicates with failover to this primary firewall. Okay, so on the secondary firewall, we'll configure failover globally. Define this unit as being the secondary unit. I'm going to say failover. We'll define our LAN interface. That's going to be gig07. Configure our state link. As soon as I added the LAN failover IP address information, the firewall started to run their discovery process and were able to detect each other. So you can see that this firewall detected the active mate, which was the primary firewall that we previously configured. And then it started to retrieve configuration replication from its active mate, so the primary firewall. So now you see our host name changed automatically. And if we run show run, you see that it's retrieved the full configuration sync from the primary. We'll log back into the primary firewall now and to verify our failover status we can run the command show failover. We see that the host that we're currently logged into is considered to be the primary and active firewall. So that's what it should look like normally. And then our secondary unit is standby and ready. So that's exactly what we want to see on the secondary firewall. This tells me that we're running good and failover is configured properly. Once you have failover looking good, it's always good to test it. So we can actually run a command on the standby and tell it to be the active firewall. And then that'll force this primary firewall to be the standby just as a test. And then we'll switch it back. So I'll get an infinite ping going here to the primary firewalls management IP and we'll see what happens and how quickly we fail over to the backup unit. So I'm going to run the command failover active on the standby unit. So this should tell the standby unit to take over as the active firewall. Of course I'm going to lose my connection from that session. It looks like we did not lose any pings though. So now if I log in to 10.0.2.10, so now I'm logged into the secondary that's now the active firewall, and I run show failover, and you can see that sure enough, we forced a failover between the firewalls. So now the secondary units, the active, and our primary is standby. And we'll run the command failover active, and this will make the primary the active firewall again. And you can see that again, we did not even lose a ping. So you can see how fast ASA failover works. And there you go. So now we're back to normal. Failover can also be monitored and configured from the ASDM. Right from the home page we see we have a failover status section here if you click the details option it links you right to the monitoring page 
where you can monitor your ASA failover status. We can even send some commands to the firewalls right from here. To configure ASA failover from the ASDM, if we go to configuration, device management, and then there is a high availability and scalability section. There's a wizard you can launch if you want to configure failover that way. Or you can go to the failover configuration area. ASA firewalls can be configured with advanced firewall services for additional protection. Botnet traffic filtering is a service that can be enabled, along with a license, to protect against botnet and other suspicious activity. A dynamic database hosted by Cisco updates botnet-enabled ASAs with blacklisted domains. When clients try to connect to sites that match a site from the dynamic database, the ASA can log and drop the connection attempts. The latest and greatest ASA firewall services are classified as Next Generation Firewall Services. These services include IPS, URL filtering, and AMP. Now that Cisco has bought SourceFire and revamped their security solutions, all of these services are available on board Cisco ASA firewalls.